Those deaths include our sicknesses, Lord God. Those Thank deaths you, include Lord. our financials, Lord God. Lord, that debt includes all all of our lives, Lord God, yes. everything we go through, Lord. So I pray today, Lord God, that my brothers and sisters' lives will be transformed because you paid that debt for them, Lord God. No matter what they're going through, Lord God, I pray that you would touch them, Lord, that they would not leave the same as they walked in, Lord, but they would leave transformed in their lives, Lord. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, even as they partake in communion today, Lord, Lord, that it would just remind them of what you did, Lord. And it would touch their areas of their life where it needs to be touched, Lord, as well as the message, Lord God. Open up our deaf ears to hear your voice within pastor's voice this morning, Lord God. Open our eyes to see the scriptures, Lord God, and what you're speaking to us this morning, Lord God. And most of all, Lord God, that we would lead transformed, Lord, today, Lord. Not only through the worship or the, or the message, but, Lord, even through the handshake or a conversation downstairs. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and the whole church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Wasn't those fun songs? Wasn't that awesome? God, you just could go home and just like, oh, I've had church. You know, it's songs like that. I've had church. But praise God, I have a new friend. Her name is Linda, and she comes on Wednesday, and she says, Pastor Bob, I'm coming for communion. So it's so good to have you, Linda. And so if you, if you, everybody have their communion uh, cups and all that stuff, we're going to celebrate. Uh, Jesse, we have a couple hands over here. Some, Jesse, could you bring some communion cups, bring them on up to the front, and, um, okay, Jesse, no, communion cups, the cups, yeah, they would bring, get about four or five of them, yeah, so we got one here and three here, okay, well, praise the Lord, you know, communion is an institution that Jesus started, and he said, the night in which he's betrayed, he, he took he took his disciples, and he sat with them. And they thought it was, well, it was a Passover dinner, and, and he did something transforming that has changed the church. And the transforming is this, that we would partake in remembrance of what he did, as Bam said, of this cross behind us, to die for your shortcomings and mine. And, you know, even though his heart was heavy, I mean, to go to a, knowing he was going to go to a cross, be lifted up. He knew that he would be lifted up because he talked about as, the, as when Moses, when the people messed up and sinned in the wilderness, um, sin separates us and things happen, come in. And God doesn't want that. He wants to deliver. And so he said, Moses, you make, you make a bronze post and, and I want you to, Circle a, a snake around it with, in bronze. And, and, you know, you see our medical uh, figures, you see that post and the snake around it. That really represents a salvation to Israel at one time. And Jesus told Nicodemus, he says, he says as, the son, as, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so will the Son of Man be lifted up for, for you, Nicodemus, and all people. And that lifting up was the lifting up of this cross. He wasn't going to be stoned. He knew that. I mean, Jesus is Alpha and Omega. He knows everything. He knew that Judas would mess him, would not change his heart. So he was put in Scripture. I say that a lot. People say, well, he didn't have a chance. He had a chance. Everyone has a chance. God knew that he would not repent. You think, well, he didn't have a chance. He had a chance. But he didn't take that chance like Peter. And so Jesus knew when he was going to be betrayed he had his friends and by the way he calls them friends he call he calls them apostles because apostle means sent out and disciples are ones who are learning like us and but i think what, what really i think is more than just being called an apostle or disciple is be called a friend everyone wants friends amen it hurts when you're not in the group i like to be friends not everybody wants to be my friend. What can I say? You know, it's, but and Jesus wants to be everyone's friend. And what does he say? I think his heart hurts, but he does keep moving. And he looks for someone who is say, I want to step into this friendship. And then he told his disciples in the night in which he was betrayed, he said, my life is going to be broken in a way that will pay. He didn't say this, pay for your sins. But he says, my, my body will be broken. This bread that I'm breaking represents my body. 
They didn't see it. Many people don't see it in the world. They don't see Jesus. They just they see crosses all over the world, but they don't see what he did. The cross represents salvation, dying for their sin. Sadly, they don't see, and that's where God uses you and I to, as reconcilers to go out and tell them about this love. Their sins are forgiven. Would you receive Jesus? I don't want to. So if they don't repent, sadly, the Bible says you'll die in your sins. I'm not going to go down that track right now, but it's a truth. But Jesus said, I'm doing this for not just you guys, but for the world. As often as you partake in this communion, you do this in remembrance of me. Now, some people say, I come from a Catholic background. I'm a born-again Catholic. And I always say this because I follow Mary's advice. What's Mary's advice? What she said at the wedding of Canaan? Whatever he says, do. Now, Jesus is the living word. And when he speaks into my life, this muddy water or whiffing that's just water, it becomes new wine. And who am I, Lord? Who are you? When you think you're something, as Paul would say to the Galatian church, you're nothing. So stay in humility. Keep your armor covered with humility. And when the enemy comes, you can open up and tell him, get out of here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But walk with humility with your brothers. We'll talk about that later on, about how to help one another, if you'll see your notes. But you that are viewing, if you have some bread or crackers, some juice, it's all about him. Now, from my tradition, we would, there'd be a transubstantiation. They become the literal body of Jesus. You know, the presence of the Lord is here. So I like to say it this way. He's in everything. He's in these elements too. So we can kind of put that to rest. And I'm not going to go down that trail too much. But the beauty is, is he's here. And the more beautiful thing is he's in us. Christ in me, that hope of glory. The hope of glory is this, when we go to heaven. But right now, you can walk in that beautiful light now as, as he's in the light. If you walk in, I think, in forgiveness, humility, and, well, a couple things, you'll hear that in the sermon later. <laughs> but if you take your elements, your bread, and you at home, listen, remember, it's what he did for you. These songs are so appropriate. Thank you, Bam and Bessie and, and, the, and the choir that we entered in to praise and adoration unto the King of kings, your Lord, my Savior, your Savior, the world's Savior. And we do this to him. He says, as often as you eat this, you do this remembrance, what he did for you. And a lot of times we think, oh, it's just for us. No, take this personally. A personal blessing to you. We have a little boy that can't hear right now. He's deaf. His name is David. He can't hear me. He's with daddy and grandma and his cousin. But the Holy Spirit is there for him too. We trust one day God will open his ears, as he did many in, the, in his journey, those three and a half years. So would you bow your heart with me and hold this element before the Lord. Father, we thank you. That's because of such love that you gave us. You, you sent forth your son for you so loved this world you created. But we, who made our new who are made in your image. You sent Jesus, and Jesus, you willingly came, knowing you would be lifted on a cross, and all who look to you and call out to you with a, with a heart that is true and meaningful, they will be saved. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Would you eat all of it? In the same manner, he took a cup, Remember, they were having like a Passover dinner, so it was kind of like um, same old, same old, but a little different. Then he takes a cup. This is, he says, this is a cup of the new covenant, and this represents my blood. It's like, could you imagine what these guys are thinking? It's like, whoa, you're going deep, Jesus. He went deep a lot of times. And one of the time when he said, and it, you know your Bible, some of you, and maybe you don't. If you don't, keep reading it every day, and you'll know a lot. That's the greatest sermons of all, every day in your devotions. Jesus said this, and this is where he lost a lot of friends. A lot of people that are disciples at one time. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have nothing of me. They didn't, it was a spiritual thing. The Bible does say he was talking spiritually, and it's true. It's, it's a spiritual reality. Our lives are consumed with his very life. 
Jesus says some harsh things. To some, they weren't kind. And the, some people, that they, if it's not about them, then they leave the church. Don't leave Jesus and don't leave the church. Because it's his church. He started it. Not pastors. He's a great pastor around the world. And they're great. But they're just like us. Disciples. I want to know more of you. Moses said this. He says, I, I, he saw the Red Sea open. He saw miracle after miracle. Saw manna come down. He says, it's just not enough. Could you imagine seeing all that stuff and say it's not enough? I want to see your glory. And the Lord says, you can't see my glory, but I'll tell you what, Moses, I'll, I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. We've seen songs. There's some old hymnals in the cleft of the rock. And he, he, the Lord, he moved past Moses, but he put his hand over him, and then he let him see the back side of him. He didn't let him see his face. And that I don't, I don't understand that, and I, I don't know of any preachers on the planet, never heard of any. I've sat under some great people like you. But let's be real. Who can fully give full counsel and des describe this God? No one can. I think they're insane to try. Not that they're insane to try, but when they say, I got to figure it out. They need, to, they need to bring it back a little bit and continue to encourage and say, I'm following just like you. And Jesus said, look, this is my blood and it'll be shed for you. It's a new covenant. It's a new testament in my blood. I'm writing it, talking about wills or, or other things. You don't sign in your blood, you sign in ink. And that holds up in any court of law. But Jesus paid it all with his blood. As often as you drink this, you do this in remembrance of me. Would you hold this cup? Father, we thank you again. You saw, as Bam said before, the foundations of the world. You saw us. You, you predestined us. I do not understand, Lord, but I thank you for what, for what I do understand, that I can walk in this light as you, Jesus, are in the light, and I have fellowship with your family here and wherever we go every day. Thank you, Jesus, that you, the Son of God, became the Son of Man to bring us into the circle of this love and be one with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in that great family, that first family. Thank you again in Jesus' name. Drink all of it. You stand with me. And uh, I, uh, I don't carry a good pitch. I try. But, um, you know, we sang that last song. It's pretty good. We're not going to sing that one again. Will you stand with me, please? And if you know this song... I like to sing it just because you know what? The apostles, when they finished communion, you know what they did? They sang a hymn. Do you, if you, if the Bible says, and they went out and they sang a hymn. So, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Tell the person next to you, glad to see them. Amen. Good. It's awesome that you're here to be a family and sharing, man. And Bob just happened to drop in. <laughs> I think it was planned. <laughs> yeah. Good. Bam. Kind of make it a little brief as possible. Thank you, Mr. I love songs. I love this lady. I love oh, what happened to my friend Cheryl? Okay. You tell her I said hi. Did that help yesterday? Oh, she said I felt. Later she told me I felt like I had surgery. I'm a fan of yours, and he's a fan of yours too. Yes, amen. <laughs> I want to say hi to David. David, David, hi, hi, buddy. Hi, hi. what's that? Yep. Nope. <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> 
Let's go. Boom. Yeah. Hi, honey. Good to see everybody here. With Grandma and Uncle Nick. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Hello. Good. Uh, so we have to sit so much for you. I mean, stand so much for you. You sit. Don't you worry about standing. Uh, sure. Anyway. Well, I know Amen. Amen. Hey, look who's here. Just a, a few announcements. I just want to encourage the women again to remember the uh, Monday night women's Bible study. They are going through the book of John. It is on Zoom. The number is on the, the front of this page. But if you have any questions about it, you can see Miss Barbara, Lana, or my wife, Bessie, downstairs for the women's Bible study at 7 o'clock. But also... Thursday nights at 7 o'clock downstairs, we're having our men's Bible study. We're going through the book of Matthew. Again, I just encourage you guys to come out um, and join us. We have like 17 guys already coming, and some of them aren't even from our church, you know, they're, but they're coming. So, you know, it's building the men who they're supposed to be, the priests of their home. Amen. And also remember uh, Wednesday night prayer. Can't stress how important prayer is. We need to pray, come in and pray for the churches, pray for our nation. Remember, this is an election year. Re, like I said, whatever party you belong to, but pray and understand who your candidate is. And also pray for uh, the bills that they want to uh, introduce. And also remember, uh, on the 18th of this month, mark it in your calendar, is Love Life, where we go and stand in the gap for the unborn. We do a prayer walk. You get your exercise in. You don't have to talk to nobody. You just walk and pray. That's all you have to do. So, again, I encourage you to come out to Love Life on that one as well. Amen. And don't forget, today is uh, our second meeting for uh, building uh, a solid foundation. Uh, we will be downstairs because the Methodists are going to be up here um, early this morning. So we'll, we'll be downstairs. So, again, I just encourage you to come out on that. And if you also want to get involved with the homeless ministry, you can see Sister Lana um, and ask her how, how to get involved in that. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Wednesday night youth group, 7 o'clock. And also remember the, col uh, the college and career, the young adults. We had our first meeting uh, last week. It was great. So we're going to plan another one for this coming month. So remember our... But also remember our children. They're the ones being attacked the most. Remember also for uh, those that are graduating as they close the chapter in their lives. Amen? Amen. And, I think, and don't forget, next Sunday is Mother's Day. So you moms, if you have children that aren't in church, you could tell them all you have to do is come to church. That would be my Mother's Day gift. So remember that as well. Amen? Pastor? Barb? <laughs> Bessie? All right. Youth, I got. <laughs> How many know it's good to give to God? You can never outgive God. The more you sow into God, the more he's going to give back to you. You know, you could look at your stock market and it's going down, but when you invest in the kingdom of God's stock, it will never go down. So we have our box back there where you can give or you can go online to give at www.newhopefellowshipsandemus.org and follow the link that says give. But let's pray for our morning tithes and offering. Lord, again, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, that we have the opportunity, Lord, to sow into your kingdom for your glory, not for ours, but for your glory, Lord. And I thank you that it would multiply for your kingdom, Lord. And I thank you that it would touch the ends of the world, Lord God. And it would touch those that need a special touch, Lord God, whatever it may be, Lord. And I ask that you bless those that are able to give and especially bless those that are able to give in jesus name amen amen thank you bam uh, our we'll be staying in the service um by the way this i think that our young people can handle this one if they don't have a uh, some notes they probably could uh could uh, handle the notes um because we're going to be talking about how we talk about one another as christians but also too um how uh we even treat others out Side the church. So if you turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 3, 8 through 12, and um, we will get going. You that are joining us online, later on YouTube, the title of this sermon is Unity and Harmony in the Local Church. And there are several verses here, and as I mentioned, um, 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12 is, is this... Um, portion of text we're looking at. Last week we talked about, about marriage and wives, respect your husbands. Actually, the scripture says submit. 
Scripture says, submit, and um, husbands, um, you know, honor them, and even lay your life down. I got out uh, only with a few scratches. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, okay, you missed that, but that's okay. It's, uh, there's other scriptures, and Greg will bring those up. In fact, I see that he brought up some of the, that first, uh, the text. But you see in your theme, it's a, it's a big theme, and I, I had to put that in there because it's going to cover a lot. But let me just read it. God's will for us is wonderful. We talked about that. We sang that in, in some of the song, wonderful. When we're at peace in Christ, sensing and knowing his will at the time, but his will is also interconnected during conflicts. Uh-oh with one another where the Holy Spirit is helping us in areas of our life to use words to bless others by helping each other. That's, that's a big thing. Okay, and we, we, you're going to hear some illustrations. You may like them or not, but anyway, it's what I, I'm going to share. Our words are important not only so that we don't hurt others in gentle responses, but that we do not close the door on God's blessings in our life because of our harsh response that is, not God's will. You know, there, there's a place, gentle response, but when there's harshness, we need to be careful. There's three points we want to look at. Live in a way that pro- promotes unity and harmony. That's verse 8. Point two, when wronged, bless. Do not worsen the situation. We'll break that out the best that I can by the Lord's help. Verse 9. Point three, pursue peace when possible, speaking good of others. Verses 10 through 12. And of course, uh, I might as well just read this, things of importance, because I may not get those at the end. It's better to learn, these are things on our notes, it is better to learn how to deal with conflict than run away from it. We'll break that out best we can. And here's one of the ingredients that Jesus told us, Matthew 18, 15. You read it. I will read it later. This is true in marriage, church, and life in general. God wants to bless with grace and forgiveness. Do we really love our brothers in Christ? If we do, it will show. It will show. One of the things that marks a person as a Christian is one's conduct and the love we have for other people and Christians. Not just Christians, other people. Well, they're not a Christian, so I ha- I'm exempt. No, that's not what the, the Word of God says. In fact, the Word of God even goes further. It says, love your enemies. Oof. I didn't put that in there. I thought, well, because I don't want to have to explain a whole bunch of stuff because I only got a half hour. John 13, 35 says this, By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, you've all heard the saying, sticks and stones will hurt my bones, but words will never hurt me. Pooey. Really? We know that's not true. And don't kid yourself. Words have potency. You know, the Lord himself spoke the universe into existence. And in the beginning, he spoke the universe into existence. He spoke us into existence. Words have impact. Words have impact with God. And our words have impact too. The Bible says his word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Cutting deep. Your words have impact too. And they can cut deep. You think what just... We're going to use God's word, and it's active, and, and it's sharp. Your words are sharp and active, too. Our words are living active. Our words are like God's. They can nourish one spirit with a good word. And God's word does nourish us. Now, I mean, this is coming into election year, and uh, I'm not a big fan of Donald Trump. Now, I will vote for him. His words he uses, he uses to his advantage at times, whether you like what I'm saying here or not. It hurts others, and I personally think it hurts him. Now, I will vote for him because I believe that he's, he's a, he has conservative biblical views. I'm, this band that I'm wearing, it's, we love life. He's pro-life. I, in 73, when Roe versus Wade came out, I, I would just became a Christian a couple years earlier. I thought, wow. They're wiping out babies? That's like, I, that sounds weird. Of course, I'm not a female, and I never put in a situation like that. You know? But it just didn't seem right, because we all were there. And it didn't seem right, and it never seemed right to me. And finally, about three years ago, we joined with uh, another church, Calvary Chapel, Jack Hibbs Church. Not that it's Jack Hibbs Church, because like I said, nobody has a claim to Jesus' church. Amen? 
It's his church. And so we partnered up, and every month, bam, like I mentioned, the third week of the month, we go out, and we, we have a Jericho march where we pray. But Donald, what he does, he, I think he hurts himself. Now, if what he does helps him, only God knows his future. And you don't know his future either. But I will vote for him because of the right to life and other conservative values I see in the Scripture. There are other values I do not see with others. I'd rather almost just be an independent. But if that independent, whoever, I'd, I'd vote for anyone who would go into the, the Word of God and say, I will be this way. I've, I've mentioned many times my dog, Max. One time I had a dog um, called Max Jr., and, and I needed help, and Sharon helped me with a little card she sent to me about Max. And I said, you know, if Max were to run for president and he would be pro-life, I'd vote for Max for president. My dog. So if you're thinking, well, you know, you Trump or not, no, no, no. In fact, I have a sticker that says, uh, it's a MAGA sticker, but it doesn't say what you think. It says, make America godly again. 2 Corinthians, so I think it was it's 4, uh, I forgot the full scripture, 717 or 417. I don't know. Don't hold me to that. But I, I think words can hurt. Now, how many have ever heard of the box of Muhammad Ali? Yeah. Well, you know, he was called the champ. We had a family friend. He was an artist, a great artist, and he still is to this day. And he, wrote, he did a portrait from my hand down to the ground of him standing like this and on his belt buckle, the champ. And <laughs> Muhammad Ali was one with words too. When he saw our friend Dave, who's a family member and still is, he looked at Dave and he said this, exact words, and Dave told me this. He says, he says you're not as dumb as you look. Dave looked in bewilderment. What? I just painted this beautiful picture, and he and they unveiled it. You know, one of these unveilings. Muhammad Ali, he had a lot of problems with his mouth. Personally, I'm uncomfortable with caustic speakers who speak forward things about other people. You know, if you're going to make a joke about something, why don't you be self-depreciating? Why don't you do this? And, and I looked this up. Self-depreciating is a definition. It's simply, it is simply modesty or criticism of oneself. Some say that self-depreciating jokes are humiliating to you and degrading. On the contrary, we believe it takes confident, yet humble, a humble person who knows their weaknesses and shortcomings, yet isn't afraid to point them out and laugh about them instead of others. After all, there, are, there is not a single person who's flawless. Flaws are exactly what makes us human. No need to hide them under lock and key. And then we point to others. It's very difficult. You know, Muhammad Ali, he also too, I don't know if you you knew his first name was Cassius Clay. Did you ever hear that before? Cassius Clay, if you (laughs) came through the 60s, Muhammad had a big mouth. And anyway, he would trash talk and uh, he got this trash talk from a wrestler called George, a gorgeous George Wagner, and he, so he took up that ability to trash talk. And so what he, when he came to some of his, these people, this big mouth, Muhammad Ali, he started to taunt, and Sonny Liston was one of them he taunted, and listen to what he said about him. He, he was dubbing him this big, ugly bear, claiming Liston even smells like a bear. I'm going to give him a, a local zoo, and I'll whoop him. Boy, can you imagine? I mean... You, we, as Christians, are we going to, you know, they're, you know, that's the world. And, I, you know, we need to pray for people in authority, such as anybody who's, I think, loose tongue. But why is it in the church? You know, interesting about Muhammad Ali, I met him personally, one-on-one. I would go stand by uh, through my father-in-law's uh, standby tickets with American Airlines. And I'm sitting there waiting for my ride. And here's all the, these little kids and here's this big guy in all black and he's walking he's kind of he's you know at this time in his life he has parkinson's and so he's 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 not moving well and he's shaking you, you follow me so all the kids leave and he was left alone i thought my gosh that's the greatest fighter they say and it's muhammad Ali. i went up to him and i i said muhammad and 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 he turned around and he, hi and he was humbled. Hi. 
what's, what, what's your name? I, I'm Bob. And, and I said, I, I respect you, Muhammad Ali. And he, said, and he, he gave me a card. By the way, I, I, want, I, I gave it to, this card to my, my grandson, Jacob. He's not here. But it, you know, he, it was his like, calling card, his business card. And I took, uh, took it, and, and uh, I think I might have shared it one other time here in the church. But you know what happened to him? You know, it wasn't God going after him. He just took a lot of hits to the head, and Parkinson was, you know, it, it, it killed him. He died in 2016. Our words, like I said, can nourish other people and believers as well. We can respect even if we don't agree with them. We can still respect them. That's God's will, I believe, in our lives. Nothing tests a person's maturity in Christ like conflict, marriage, children, workplace, neighborhood, and church because of things we say to one another. We can, we can affect. Our words stay and they hurt. It's, it's, you know, God didn't make us robots. He doesn't want us to say, oh, you're to act so... No, you have a choice to conduct yourself. And through your emotions, you trust Jesus. Jesus, help me. I need help. I've been hurt. Have you ever been hurt by people? Raise your hand. Have you been hurt? Oh, my gosh, few people have never been hurt. You're, you're blessed. You liars. No, I'm kidding you. But, um, but we've all been hurt in our families, in the church, at school. Learn to forgive and give it to the Lord. He'll help you. So let's read our text. If you have your Bibles or if you want to look behind me, it's 1 Peter chapter 3, 8 through 12. Just a few verses. Finally, all of you, be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling. In other words, getting back reviling or saying bad things, but on the contrary, blessings, knowing that you were called to this. This is God's will, that you may inherit a blessing. God wants to bless you, but something stopped those blessings. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. For the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And by the way, that doesn't just mean non-believers. That means all of us. It, the context is to believers. This Bible is, is, is written to believers. And when you're a non-believer, and if you start to read it, if you're hungry, I want to know, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes. It, he lifts a veil. I don't know what the Scripture says in Corinthians. The veil of unbelief is lifted. And the Jews still have a veil over them. But we, as, if, we're, if we're going through things, God help me. When you get in the Word, you think, well, I don't understand it. Friends, the reason you don't understand it is because you're trying to intellectualize it. It's a spiritual book. And you read it from the heart. And all of a sudden, it's like these, these things you see at the, fair, at the fair. You know, you come across these things, and they have all this marbling stuff in there. And you say, well, just keep staring at it. Put your... Put some time in it. All of a sudden, it comes alive, and you see the dolphins moving. You ever seen that before? No? Yes. I'm, I'm the only one that goes to the fair. Uh, anyway, but it, it's the same way. It's like, stare with your heart. God, speak to me, and he'll help you. He'll help you in your situations. The early church, they were the reason we have this book, because they too, they were being encouraged through these letters, because there was conflict, conflicts then. Well, they were just... There were apostles. Are you kidding? I'm not going to get in. I can't get into the story of all the conflicts within the great 12 apostles and the disciples. And the church is, oh my gosh, you start naming. They name names. They name names of troublemakers in the church. And, we, and I don't want to. But it's important that we realize that no church is perfect. Billy Graham said this, if you find the perfect church, don't join it. You will spoil it. Okay? So conflict, uh, conflict happens, and so we have these strong opinions. We are to be of one mind. This one mind is it's a nurture of harmony. Harmony is like-minded. Harmony is, it's not surrender. Oh, I don't, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to just agree. No, no, you have an opinion, but you want to work toward unity. Sympathy, sharing your feelings, it's okay. Compassion is, hey, let's be compassionate. Let's be open and tender. I mean, 
Marriage isn't easy. We know that. And if we don't work with those areas and be compassionate, forgiving, those marriages will not last. They just won't. You know, we allow ourselves to speak well of one another. And by the way, if others are attacked, I think it's good that we help those who are attacked, encourage them. Cruel words hurt. Cruel words are not welcomed in this church. And I will try to defend anyone. And I hope you defend me if I am attacked. I don't know. I, I should be, as even the Apostle Paul said, take it. And let God defend. He will. Proverbs 25, 11-12. Greg will bring it up quickly, I think. A word fitly spoken. Fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold is a wise rebuker, so is an obedient ear. When we share things, I mean, we don't have to be harsh, but we can be forthright and help people. You know, I heard of a story of a person who got a call from somebody and they were talking, all of a sudden the conversation started about a pastor and that person said, stop! I don't want to hear no more. You should say that about anybody that start to badmouth one another. God doesn't want us to do that. Let us love as brothers, tenderhearted, be courteous, brotherly love. Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia is the, the city of brotherly love and it's the Greek word is Philadelphias. It's a word of loving one's brother. Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia is a Greek word. And it, by the way, when, when there's love, there's vulnerability. But we're honest with one another. And we can take a long time to heal if words are hurting. But we can be so nourished if we're encouraged with those nourishing words. But if we start off with harsh words... We need to tune it down. And if you start out with gentleness and you get firmer as needed, that's understanding. But where's your starting point? We need to remember. And humility is, humility is, is, is a mind that tries to ease solutions for complex problems. Be tenderhearted, courteous. Point two, when wrong, bless. Do not worsen the situation. Not returning evil for evil, reviling for reviling. By the way, that reviling is, uh, is, is getting even and saying slanderous things. But God wants us to bless. And by the way, uh, Spence said, the difference between spiritual and unspiritual community is not whether conflicts exist, they do, but it's rather in our attitude toward it and our approach to handling it. When conflict is seen as an opportunity to draw more fully on spiritual resources, like the Holy Spirit's help, we have the makings of a spiritual community. Amen? We look to the Lord. Help us, Lord. The Bible says that the apostles had situations when there, there was these women who were believers. They were Jewish, Messianic Jews, but they were from the Greek portion of the church called Hellenist believers, and the ones who were in Jerusalem and more Hebrew, they were, they were getting more attention. And so they, they set themselves aside, the apostles set themselves aside, then they needed help from the Holy Spirit. There's always problems. Someone, we need help. And God will help us if we so desire that. But we treat not negatively, not in retaliation, but on the contrary, we bless, like it says in verse 9, knowing that you were called to this. What? You know, I love people say, well, I've been called to be a pastor. I got called to be a worship leader. I've been called to be a teacher. Great. But the great call is this. Come to Jesus. Come to him. And then he starts to kind of nibble away at our, our lives and we mature and he calls us to this. Be a blessing. Nurture others with your words. Care for others. Marriages aren't going to last if we keep attacking each other, or the church isn't going to la last either. We keep attacking one another. Reason for such conduct, overwhelmed by appreciation of God's grace. Reason in this way. Pray for God's grace. Grace is a calling to bless us, and we're not to curse. And when you're attacked, and we all are, we all are, and sometimes it just, I'm not going to go down that trail because it's just, it's deep. But God will help you. 
We need to have a clear mind. We need to hold our emotions in place. Paul says this in Romans. Now, I was praying about this, and the Lord let me say this, because we share this scripture about being saved eternally. You know, I was with some friends this last Saturday, and we were talking about salvation. And the word sozo means saved. It's I'm saved, I'm being saved, and I will be saved. The word sozo. I will stretch it a little bit. And here in Romans chapter 10, 12 through 13 says this. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For some, for the same Lord is over all, is rich to all who call upon him, okay? For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus saves us when we are in trouble, not just saves our soul to go to eternity. He wants us to enjoy this, even this morning where we're worshiping this this King of kings and your Lord, who is Lord of all. He will save you in your trial where you're at. You call on the Lord. What do I do? I call on you. We don't use that word, Lord, save me from this person. We just, Lord, I need your help. People say, I don't have problems. Don't liar. I like what Rick Warren says, and I share this at many funerals in my introductions and then other stuff too, but he says, he says you, you, when you get out of a trial, he says, beware, you're going to come into another one soon. You think you just got out of it? There's other trials that are you coming your way. Why? It's just humanity. And call out to the Lord. Do not repay evil for evil. Do not insult because you've been insulted. And you know, I, I, let's, I mean, it's not easy to, to do this stuff, but with the grace and the Holy Spirit, you can take it. Take it, because you can continue the fire. In fact, there's some, if you've ever read the book of Proverbs, it's amazing what our words do. It talks about our words are like fire. And how do we fire and keep it going? We keep contending with it. We keep feeding it, and it becomes a fire. In fact, James talks about that, you know, that our, our words, are, uh, what, the course of nature, a little flame can start these mountains on fire. So your words, your slander, your gossip, and everything else can hurt deeply. We know, and sometimes, why is this happening? I think sometimes God tests us. If you ever, if you ever taken tests, we all have. It's like, oh, it shows you where you're at. God will allow you to be tested. He tested Abraham. He said, Abraham, take your only son, Isaac, probably about 12 years old now because he can carry some wood. Boy, I'm not going to carry that all up to, to all the way up to Mount Moriah, which is the mount where Mount Moriah was, where the temple, the temple would be in the future. And he says, "I want you to sacrifice your son." And he was tested, and he passed the test because he trusted God. God will test you even through other people. Why? I don't know completely, but He wants you to know there's still some work to be done in you, Bob. Bob, you're. You're a work in process. <laughs> wow. Don't you wish you were just done with it? But you're not. When, one day, one day you will have a final breath. And he, and I hope, and I shared this many times like you, I want to hear him say, enter into the, the joy of your Lord. Enter into the joy of your Lord, thou good and faithful servant. God just doesn't want you faithful in certain things you like. But Lord, what's your will? I don't think Jesus particularly liked to be nailed on the cross, but he knew he saw you in his future. For the joy that was set before him, he went to a cross, Hebrews chapter 12, 2. For the joy that was set before him. Imagine, Jesus wasn't dancing on that, but he saw in the future. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What was the joy? You and me. You and me. In this beautiful oneness with him. When Jesus just before he went to the cross in Romans or John 17, he says, Oh Father, as we are one, so they will be one with us after this, if they believe. And not only that, but the words that they share with others, they'll be one too with us. So your words, like I said, they can nourish and encourage and bring others into the kingdom. Isn't that neat? Oh, I just gotta have Jesus. I don't need the church, you need the church. Because it's Jesus' church. It's not Bob's, it's not Jack Kids, it's not whoever your pastor is. 
I shouldn't say this word, but I will. That's horse manure. When he said, oh, that's their church. Jesus has put them there for a purpose. Pray for them because the enemy wants to take pastors and teachers, marriages, you out. Stay humble and pray and be more than a conqueror. And rebuke in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood and tell those dark spirits who are attacking you through others in the name of Jesus. Don't attack them, but know that there's foul spirits that are attacking through them. So point three, real quickly. Pursue peace when possible. Speaking good of others. Pursue peace. And actually, because you're following the Prince of Peace, so he's going to use you. And some people will poo-poo you, and, no, oh, I don't need that. Well, keep praying for them. Because God wants to use you to get to them because that's how God works. Now, the Holy Spirit can work in marvelous ways. And he does. But he particularly wants to work through you and I. That's amazing. Who am I? David? I'm going to make you, David, a house that will last forever. And David's just going, you, you, you got the right guy? He said, David, you can't do anything for me. I own a cattle on a thousand hills. You're going to build me a little house? I own the universe. I own everything in the spiritual world. In the third heaven, the heavens and the earth, everything is mine. And you're going to build me a little puny little house. They didn't say that. I'm throwing some stuff in there. And he said, but this one I'm going to do. The prophet said, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to build you a house, an enduring house. And through you, the whole world will be blessed. David came to, to a, maybe a place like this, and he just crumbled down. And he said, who am I? That's the right attitude. By the way, David wasn't a good dad. He was an adulterer. He was a murderer, if you didn't know that. But he said, God, I'm not worthy. I'm sorry. God says, that's God. When I say God, I say mean Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not just, well, we talk about the Father. I, when I say God, I say all three. Father, Son, and Spirit. God said to him, David, I'm going to do this. And when he said, Lord, I'm not worthy. Forgive me. God says, this is the man. This is the woman after my heart. When we come to a place and say, I, I, I'm, not going to re I'm not going to say I'm sorry. Not me. And you're Christian. I love the song of the, song of the Lord made me like a child. It's true. Jesus himself said, the king of creation, said, unless you become like a child, you won't enter this kingdom. Work that one out in your brain and heart. Just walk a little lighter, with more joy, even though time's can be tough. He's with you. Proverbs 23, 4 says this. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. Isn't that a beautiful thing? He's with us. And so, as we see in verse 10, it says, and he would, and for he, you and me, if you would love life and see good days, let you refrain your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Don't, be honest, and if, and, if, and if sometimes you have to say something, sometimes it's better to say nothing to hurt than to hurt. Well, I just got to be honest with them. Don't deceive them either. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord, he's right here. He's hearing what I'm saying. He's seeing what you're thinking. He's seeing if you're awake or not. I, it doesn't matter. If you fall asleep, you got the notes. So go home and think, oh, 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 I kind of remember my subconscious. I have the notes. God wants us to confront problems, not be absorbed by them. People, we get conflicted, and then we get absorbed, and that's when we get into depression. We absorb them. Oh, God, they said this about me. They're not with me. I know what it's like, and you do too. Don't stay absorbed by it, because you're going to get stuck. God wants you to be free. You are more than a conqueror. The great one lives in you, and you go into the fray like David, and you see the giants before you, and you don't say, oh... I'm going to join my brothers. I'm not going out there. David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And so they thought, shut up, man. You're going to get us in trouble. We're, we're family of Jesse. Shh. We got an inside track with, with Saul the king. David didn't care about that. He knew who saved him from the lion and the bear. And he went out and he said to the, that Philistine, he said, who are you? You come with me to me with a sword and a spear. I come to you in the name of the living God. And what did he do? He ran at Goliath. And with one stone, he hit him. One stone. And he had four others left. And by the way, if you know your Bibles, Goliath had 
four other brothers. And through David's ministry and reign, through his ministry, four other giants of Goliath's family went down too. God's going to work things. You may not see it all at once, like David did that Goliath, but there's other giants that will try to come and attack you. And when you are attacked, we need to calmly consider this all the time. How do I stop this? Jesus gave the, the, the uh, instructions in Matthew 18, 15 through 16. He says, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his faults between you and him alone. You, we need to talk. I'm not going to talk to him. Don't call me. Don't text me. Don't come around. Well, that looks, that ain't going to work, is it, Jesus? <laughs> you tried. You tried. But hopefully, there can be reconciliation. If he hears you, you have gained a brother and a sister. But if he will not hear you, take with you. Not, brother, I want fellowship with them. I want a good report. Would you come with me, Joe? Okay. I heard it from him. Uh, come with me, Sally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the brother and the witnesses, and they established this situation, and there's forgiveness. By the way, here's another beautiful scripture for unity. And it's this. 1 John 1 through 6, 7. I love this one. And you, you have read it too, and it's beautiful, and it, it goes along with this. If we say that we have fellowship with God, with Him, with Him, Jesus, and we walk in darkness, what's darkness? Darkness is self deception that I'm better than you, and I'm not going to say I'm sorry. My way is better than your way. We're Christians, but I don't give a rip. And we lie, and we do not practice the truth. The truth is Jesus. He's the way. He's the truth. And he's my life. He's our life. And so, but if we walk in this light as Jesus is, is in the light all the time, and you are too, we'll have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all this junk sin. Control our tongues. Do not be mean, lying to one another. Find peace and reasonably address them. You can. Don't gossip, slander to one another, lie with our tongues, with excuses. Believers and unbelievers alike, we can work things out, even if they're not believers. When your heart was hurt, you sought the Lord. Continue to seek peace nonetheless. Now, I've learned something that uh, has been complexing, and that is the missing pieces, is we need to get those conflicts corrected. The missing piece is that we're, we're just leaving it. Don't walk away. Get them addressed. Don't just say, oh, I'm not going to do anything about it. He hurt me. She hurt me. My kids hurt me. Work them out and pray for them and pursue that path of peace. And the Bible says this, for the eyes of the Lord on those people with right standing and his ears are open to your prayers. Why is it some of our prayers not being answered? Because it's all about me, myself, and I, my four, no more, or whatever. And we, we think, well, God doesn't answer prayers. Maybe we need to walk in the light a little bit tighter and forgive others a little bit more. I love the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer says this, Lord, forgive me of my sin. And then the Lord says, not just there in the Lord's Prayer, as you forgive others who trespass against you. See, there's a, there's a balance. You know, oh, I'm, look where I'm at. The balance is, is there's, you, you've got to stop this conflict and go to your brother. In humility, go to your sister in humility. Not like, well, I need to really address how messed up you are. We're all messed up, friends, but we're saved by grace. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? The Lord is so good, and he's good all the time, and he, just, he, he wants you to call on him all the time. Um, I... I learned a prayer, and, it's, and I, I just I shared it with the staff. I've been in, doing some studies. And, but uh, the Greek fathers back in the Cappadocian days of 200 uh, A.D. called the Jesus Prayer. How many of you ever heard of the Jesus Prayer? Never heard of the Jesus Prayer? And nobody, maybe a few here now. Jesus Prayer is this. It's real simple. And it goes like this. And by the way, there have been, people say this all the time. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. That's a Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Google it yourself. They've been saying that in the church, in the Eastern church and the Western church, mostly the Eastern church, and, and that where they are looking at to pray continually. Friends, 
follow Him with all your heart. And if you never ask Jesus Christ in your life, it's really simple. We shared that prayer or that verse, Romans 10, that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord with their heart and repent, believe He died and rose from the grave, and from your heart, you believe this. Come into my life. You have Jesus Christ. You've been born again. I, it, it, it's not like a big, you know, you're coming into the world and you've you got everybody shouting. But, but be, behind the scenes, if you did it from your heart, there's a whole lot of shouting going on in celebration in heaven. All the angels saying, hey, Joey just asked Jesus in his heart. He really he did. But Joey didn't say anything. But he, God, help me. If you're really real, I need you. Forgive me. That's a born again experience, friends. Would you bow your hearts with me? Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Lord. Help me. Be more kinder, gentler with my words, with my wife, with others, with all people. Help me to be self-depreciating. Let the joke be on me. Lord, I, I think I can handle it. I hope I can. But Lord, I don't want to make no one a, the goat of my joke. Help us, Lord. Lord, give us a heart of peace to bring that peace to others. Thank you for this morning. Lord, I want to pray blessings on my friends. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. We'll see you downstairs. We have food.